Uh, no, actually, Dwayne uh, touched on it, um, but I was going to come at it from the angle of sustainability. Um, there is what we can do now, okay, but, you know, there's the question that, uh, you know, how do we keep it going, promoting the Department of Family and Children's Services through, um, you know, on an ongoing basis, mm -hmm. and one would be like you described, um, you know, and then, of course, I had, had uh, referenced earlier, you know, when you were talking about transparency and, and, and you know, the suggestion of a, uh, of a commission, okay, an independent body, uh, of which would have its own subcommittees, of which one would include a committee uh, promoting defects, taking the data, uh, marketing the Department of Family and Children's Services, child welfare, taking that burden off, because the problem that you have is that when you go to sell yourself, people are going to say, well, he's just selling himself. But if you have an independent body that is diverse and made up of, uh, of folks who are also looking at you and measuring you, okay, and giving feedback in a positive way, uh, constructively, that's going to include, well, then part of that, how do we also disseminate that to the citizens of Georgia? And, and promote what it is that the department is doing. And so the really the question is that the devil's in the details. You know, which way do you want to do it? Or it could be done both ways. Okay? Because even though you may have a board, okay, that's there, uh, that you may be reporting to if it's a monthly board meeting, I don't know. I, I that's a conversation I'll have within our, our committee about what to recommend, but I think there needs to be an ongoing uh, independent body that has uh, implementation, oversight. See, the problem is, and why Georgia's unique after coming out of criminal justice reform, because all the other states who've done reform never created an infrastructure <coughs> to continue looking at reform, not only what we've done, okay, but when you start measuring what you have done, you begin to turn over more stones that you look back and say, well, there was more we could have done. And the other thing is, you can't do everything in one year. And reform never stops, does it? Exactly. Okay. I can, I, I can uh, speak for the governor on that, Judge Teske. And you know, his vision for creating this group was to model it after the Criminal Justice Reform Council. Um, so as we looked and really felt like we needed a group of people who were experts about Georgia's child welfare system, had spent their lives and their hearts were really in this system, which is the, all of you around this table, um, we modeled this after what we had done and what you were so instrumental in doing with the Criminal Justice Reform Council and the work that continues to go on. So, um, you know, we are very open to that continuing to be the structure similar, um, so, you know, in a similar way that we do it for criminal justice and look forward to continuing that conversation. So if any of you have an opinion about that and, and this structure uh, in particular, or it, it looking differently, um, I would love to talk to you um, offline about that as well. I would love to have your input in that. So thank you. Karen, along those lines, could I ask, is the intent that this one be dismantled, so to speak, for lack of a better word, after the recommendations come out of this? Not necessarily. Okay. We have no timeline okay. as to when we have to close this commission. Um, so the governor was very intentional about that for that reason. Thank you. Which is what it's Bobby, I just want to applaud your vision because, you know, if we don't ever set ourselves a high vision, we, we will never get there. You know, if you achieve <coughs> strive for the, the pinnacle, and I think to the point that others are making, there are a lot of people in the state that want to help. Um, you've got, we've got the best university. We have so much talent in the state. There is no reason that we can't do this. Absolutely. Um, so I applaud you for challenging all of us and this commission to help you achieve this goal. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments for Bobby? Just a comment. I hear you talk about tools, and, and I think of police departments, and, and we just be sure every police has got whatever tools that also needs out the street, radios, communications, et cetera. You talk about that lady, you're doing navigation work. Why would we just buy our navigator? You know, we we, like we actually have moved in that direction. You have need for navigators, you have need for computers. Yes. I remember years ago, back like 2003 or four, we were, we were having meetings about getting all the caseworkers, these handheld, almost like an iPad, to go around and keep their materials as opposed to carrying files. Are we doing that yet? 
we have laptops and, and, uh, and a few tablets, primarily laptops, but we need to modernize that. That's I something. You bring back to us some information about those sure. type of things where this commission can make a recommendation that there needs to be a modernization of some of the tools and get their things out there that can make your job easier in the caseworker certainly. I'll, I'll be glad to do that, and I think there is a, a great example of uh, the way to do that. Uh, the Department of Correction uh, has. Um, uh, uh, Prohibition parole officers who use some of the latest technology yeah. and um, very good example. Yeah. Thank you. And that's a perfect segue, um, Chairman Willard, into our next um, discussion as a full group, which is around subcommittees. Bobby, I don't know what I know you are probably have 50 million things. You're welcome to stay, or Katie Jo, if you want to hear any of this. But um, but thank you for being here. If you if you do need to run.